Margaret Hollister, Anishan Takta, Eon O'Reilly, Trump II. Gumagat, Kahirik, on the same matter, Tanishta, uh, uh, I just want to get on the record of the House what intentions do you have uh, to deal with the High Court uh, decision in relation to sexual employment orders uh, outside of uh, appealing to the Supreme Court? Is there any legislative proposal from, uh, from uh, your department you've suggested? in response to my colleague that you don't have any legislative proposals, but I just want you to clarify that and to justify it. Yeah, thanks. Um, thanks, Deputy. As I mentioned earlier, this, this um, case is going to be appealed uh, to both the High Court, to both the Court of Appeal and the Supreme Court with a view to going straight to the Supreme Court so we can have uh, an adjudication as soon as possible. Um, the difficulty that we have is that because this uh, section of legislation has been struck down as unconstitutional, uh, it is questionable as to whether this House can bring in sector-specific um, minimum wages, sector-specific sector uh, pension uh, arrangements, sector-specific sector term, terms and conditions. Uh, so, you know, with that in question, all we can do uh, is bring in across the board um, legislation, but that won't work because the whole point of sectoral employment orders is that, is that they're sectoral. Uh, so I'm not sure we have a legislative solution to this lacuna, to this problem that, that arises at least until the Supreme Court um, uh, hears the case. Uh, and we have to work on contingencies, depending on what the outcome uh, of that might be. Uh, having spoken to the Attorney General, uh, we're confident in the government um, that this House uh, does have the authority uh, to make uh, sectoral employment orders. Um, the Minister, on their own can't, but provided it's done by regulation and can be revoked by the House, well then we're confident that we can. But it does create a lacuna during that period and does speak to a bigger question that I think um, we, we need to resolve. There is one of the problems with sector employment orders is they do only apply to sectors. Uh, and one thing I think we need to do and we'll want to do over the next couple of years, presuming the economy uh, allows it, is to continue to raise pay terms and conditions for all workers, not just those in particular sectors uh, or those who uh, are represented by, by unions. So that is the move from the minimum wage to a living wage. Um, what that means, of course, has to be defined because it means different things to different people in different countries. Uh, the introduction of auto enrolment so that everyone has the access to a pension fund. At the moment, two thirds, three quarters of people in the private sector have no uh, access to a pension fund or an occupational pension fund. We pension apartheid in Ireland um, when you compare the public and private sectors. Uh, and then thirdly, um, increasing social insurance benefits more generally for every working person so that work pays. And we made some good progress in that regard with things like uh, treatment benefit, paternity benefit, uh, parental benefit in recent years, need to add to that now uh, with other social insurance related benefits as well, so that we're raising the floor for everyone uh, and not just those in particular sectors or those who are unionised. Uh, I suppose, uh, Minister, if you are in employment which is governed by one of these sexual employment or orders, you are going to feel particularly insecure at this moment in time, regardless. Uh, well, in, in conjunction with how insecure you might feel because of COVID, and obviously you've just come out. You've in living memory, you've, you have a, an economic crash of, of 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 less than a decade ago. Uh, my point to you would be is that we do, in fact, and have lived in a low wage economy for quite a number of years. I've said to you before, and I repeat saying it, the Labour Party will repeat saying it. Twenty three percent of workers are in the statistical low pay statistics uh, provided by the OECD. And my colleague, uh, Deputy Jed Nash, has brought in the Industrial Relations Sexual Employment Orders Confirmation Bill 2020, brought in last week. That's a piece of legislation which, if you were to support or to bring in a similar a piece of leg legislation, you'll be signalling to these workers that you have their backs and you are on their side. Now, I've been in these houses long enough to know that when a government needs or wants to do something, to send out a message, it's quite able to do so, regardless uh, of what commentators might say or what uh, constitutionality might be uh, questioned about it. So my question to you is that uh, what sort of signal would you give in terms of, of, of uh, a legislative response just as the Labour Party have done with our bill, could you not do something similar in order to show the workers that you do have their backs and you're not just going to wait for a Supreme Court uh, case or a Court of Appeal case? Thanks, Stephanie. What we're doing to demonstrate uh, that we have um, uh, the electoral contractors and workers' backs on this is appealing this. Uh, and we don't have to appeal it, but we are choosing to appeal it because we think that's the right thing to do. Um, we will look at the legislation produced. I haven't seen it yet. We will examine it. Um, but if it's unconstitutional, and you've been a minister, you've served in government, uh, you know no government can bring in legislation that is unconstitutional. And producing legislation that's unconstitutional 
uh, isn't showing that you have anyone's back. It's showing you're pretending to have someone's back, and that's not a good thing. Hello. Again, uh, Minister, it's all about intent. It's all about how, how strong you, you believe in these things. And uh, this is a piece of legislation which has been proposed by a former minister in this area who brought in the act that you uh, have already uh, listed in, in your earlier comments in terms of 2015. So this isn't a case of playing games or, or, or doing something for the sake of it. It's a piece of legislation which has identified uh, the issues raised in the court case and which is trying to iron them out. Uh, and what I'm suggesting to you is that if you were to support this bill, or indeed to give it proper consideration, and to bring in perhaps your own piece of legislation, why we wait for the Supreme Court case. I mean, to congratulate yourself for taking the Supreme Court case, uh, to be honest, jars uh, with me uh, and with my party and probably with others. If you weren't to take the Supreme Court case, uh, I think we would definitely see on what side of the fence you are on. But in the meantime, I think it's the responsibility of, of government while we wait for your stimulus package and while we wait for the Supreme Court case to show that there is nothing this government won't do or won't entertain in order to ensure that people who are protected by SEOs, who by their very nature are in vulnerable work, and that's, in, that's the reason for the necessity of SEOs, is that Margaret. people are in, are in vulnerable work and open to exploitation. This is the type of message that they need from government. The legislation has been produced by the Labour Party. I appreciate you said you're going to examine it, but can you give a, a harder uh, and a more supportive message than that, Minister? Thanks, Deputy. There, there's a big difference between intent and sincerity on the one hand uh, and virtue signalling and political messaging on the other. Um, one is good, the other is phony. Um, but we will look at the legislation that Deputy Nash has produced. Um, I, we did look at the one he produced before Christmas, which was unconstitutional. We'll see if this is uh, defective or not. Um, we'll give it seriously consideration. But what you have on behalf of the government is intent and sincerity. I don't know what we have from the Labour Party, whether it's just virtue signalling or not. We will see. Margaret, uh,